Source document in business study is our topic for today. And we are going to cover three bullet points on this subject area. One, the meaning of source document. Two, the uses of source document. And then the third one, the content that are found in source document. So let's roll with the very first one, the meaning of source document. What does such document mean? It has to do with the recording of transaction that took place in the organization. Let me explain better. Such document has to do with the primary book of account or the original book of account that transaction are recorded. That means that events that happens in the business are recorded. It can be a day-to-day -day affair that happened in the business that is recorded. Not just everything that happened, but things that are related to financial transaction. So source documents are financial transaction documented done by the bookkeeper. For example, receipts that are received by the organization, credit um, notes that are received by the organization, debit notes that are received by the organization, invoice that are received by the organization. These are sorts document because you record when, at what time, what is the description of this transaction, who are signatory to this transaction, all these are listed in the source document. So it's the original document, the very primary document, that transaction, financial transaction, don't forget that word, financial transaction that took place in the organization are recorded down into those books of account. So how we know what such document is? Why do we need a source document? But before I talk about the uses of source document. I told you that example of them are cash receipts are recorded in source document. We have an invoice, we have time sheets, and we have debit notes that are received. Cash receipt. So, 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 um, organization, so, so, person paid cash into the organizational account or paid cash to the cashier at so, so, so time with so, so, so description of goods with this and with that. And that shows how the transaction took place originally. From this source document, that is where you post to various books of account, which you will learn in subsequent classes. So how we know what source document is now, an example of source document I just gave you now, we'll go to the next one, the uses of source document. We've seen that source document are primary books of account or original books of account, where original entry as they happen are recorded. Why do we need this original book of account? Number one reason is that it acts as a proof of transaction. It proves that that transaction actually happened at a particular date, at a particular time that it was recorded. So it's a proof of a transaction having uh, a transaction that was carried out in the business or in the organization. That is one reason, proof of transaction. Number two, it shows you the exact time, the date, the time, the description of the goods or whatever have taken place during that particular time. So it gives a, a, a clear description as regards time, amount, and what happened at that time. That's another uses of such document. It helps those who want to post into other secondary books of account to post correctly. If you go to the original book of account, you will know which entry is a debit entry and which entry is a credit entry. You will know which entry is a cash receipt and which entry is a debit receipt. You will know which entry is done in an invoice way and which was not received. Uh, the invoice was not received. So it depends on the 
original document so you know where to post this original book of accounts that has been recorded and another one we want to pick it they are foundation documents in a house you find out that if you've gone to a place where they are building a house they lay the foundation before the house stands without that foundation the house will not be laid on a solid ground and so that foundation is the bedrock of that building. The primary the source document is the bedrock of a business. Because when you don't have a source document, your business doesn't uh, look very genuine. So you must have a source document to know where this transaction was extracted from. What was the original entry of this transaction so it's the foundation the bedrock of a business financially we as bookkeepers or as accountants we keep primary book of account because that is what shows that your organization is doing well you are having a good foundation for your business now having known that was the next point it helps us to verify information if for example about 10 transaction took place in a particular day and you are not very sure which day the transaction you are looking for took place once you go to this SOX document you will know at what time at what date and the description of what happened so you are able to verify that information and have the authentic information that you knew you need so SOX, uh, SOX document gives us Create authentic information as regards a particular transaction. So it helps you to verify a transaction. Having seen that it helps us to verify the transaction, auditors, it helps auditors. It helps auditors to support the accounting facts. Because if an auditor know that he's working with a transaction that have an original source, then he is able to back up his facts and support his proof of a dictatorial job he has done. And so editors love such documents because they use it to mirror the organization and support the fact of what they have proved. Now, we go to another point, which is the seventh that I'm explaining under importance. Um, good SOX document helps us to retrieve information that was omitted on other books of accounts. If in the process of recording transaction into other books of accounts, what should we do? We go to the original book of accounts to correct such omission. As you go further in um, accounting transaction, you are going to see that we are going to find out about errors of omission and errors of commission. When we see errors of omission, we can trace it back to the source document and see how we are able to correct this omission. So it helps us to correct the omission that is done somewhere in our transaction process. It's a good business behavior. Sox documents, are, they are good business behavior because it helps you to document. It helps you to put the transactional activity of the organization in a more concrete way. So, when we say that it's a good behavior, it's good because it helps the organization to see how effective they are keeping original documents. They are keeping records of how financial transactions are carried out. Then, legally, it is required. The law requires that you keep original transaction, records of original transaction, because there may be uh, transactions that took place or that have taken place that may need contention in courts. Let's take, for example, you receive an amount of goods into your organization and there is omission somewhere. And the other organization that supply you such goods give you 
a counter uh, record of what they did not supply to you. With your primary source of account, you can let them know that you supply me 50 tons of so so materials at so 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 date, at so 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 time, duly signed by those who supplied you and a member representing the organization. And so if this takes them to court and in court evidence of this is shown, it can help them under law cases. So it is a legal kind of document that is required legally for an organization to keep because it will help them. And then the last, under this important, uh, the uses of source document is source documents are kept over a period of years. Sometimes they are kept for five years or more years to be able to go retrieve it and use it for something useful. So these are the uses of source documents on our class for today. The content of source document. What do we mean by content? What does a source document contain? What are the contents that are found in a source document? Now let's go and see what are the, the items that are found in the content. These are the items. We have the first one. A source document must possess the date. The date that the transaction took place must happen, must be written. For example, let's say this transaction took place on the 1st of February 2002. 2002. It must be recorded. It must be written out clearly that this transaction happened on the 1st of February 2002. So the date of when that transaction took place must be recorded. That is one of the contents of what you will find in a source document. Then the next one, if it requires payment, the total amount that happened or that took place in that transaction must be recorded. The total amount of transaction must be recorded. If the amount is 100,000 Naira, it must be clearly stated that so, so so transaction that took place between company A and B, that the amount transacted between these two companies was 100,000 Naira. And so the amount must be recorded. So 100,000 naira, 100, naira must be in the content of the source document. That's another thing that has to be written in the source document. Having seen that, we'll go to the next, which is description of transaction. What is the description of this transaction? Let's take, for example, it's a company that uses rubber. And so the raw material supplied to them is rubber. They can say 100 tons of rubber was supplied to company so 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 at 100 naira per ton 100 tons of rubber supplied at 100 per ton so that gives you the description of what was supplied what if it's granite for a construction company? You can say 100 trips of granite supplied to this company are at 50,000 per trip. So that gives you the description of what was supplied. So in a source document, there must be a description of what happened, how the transaction happened, the quantity, the supply. At what price it was supplied, it must be described. And then, lastly, there must be one or more authorized signature. Most times, it has to be more because you that uh, supplied or you that uh, come for the transaction, transaction has to be two party. 
It's a kind of two-party transaction. If it's going to be a credit re receipt, two persons have to sign it. A debit receipt, two persons have to sign it. A delivery, two persons have to. One person deliver, another one receives. So two signature, two or more signatory have to be there. The receiver sign, then the giver sign. So there must be an authorized signature for a source document to be valid. If no source document, if, if no signature is found in the source document, it's not valid. So this content is very important for source document. The date of the transaction, the total amount of the transaction, the description of the transaction, one or more authorized signature involved in the transaction. So this is it for source document. We have covered the meaning of source document. We have seen the uses and we have seen the content that is contained in the source document. Go over your class again and if you have any question, give me a comment below the comment box. I'll give you feedback. I'll answer your question. Answering your question is my priority because I want you to learn and understand. And if you've not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. If you've subscribed, share. Spread the word about us to others so that they know what we are doing here. We give you free classes here on our YouTube channel. But if you want a more concise classes where you have all the classes put together, you can visit our uh, website at classonlineschool.com where you will pay a token for a concise class of this. And if you are a parent, a guardian, or a student who wants to know more about sex education, we have an ebook in our website, Class Online School, where we have an in depth discussion of what sex education is, at what age a child should know sex education. So if you are interested in all this, please visit our website to get more information about Class Online School. It's a pleasure to be with you again. And until next time, when we come our way, when you come our way, remember that the program is not a monologue, it's a dialogue, a discussion between you and us. And if you know what will make us serve you better, please let us know. Give us a feedback. Thank you for coming by.